Yo, what to do, YouTube? My name is Ruan, and I'm here to bring you the official Kung Lao guide for Dash Fight. Brief introduction to who I am. I am a 20-year-old professional MK11 player for the United States of America and one of the best players in the world. Before we start, be sure to subscribe to Dash Fight for more character guides and check out their website for all things FGC. Stick around to the end of the video to see which character guide is coming next. Alright, jumping right into the guide, I'm going to go over some of Kung Lao's best buttons. First up, we got forward one. It is one of his best, if not his best mid. It is 10 frames on startup. It's a really good stagger and it leads into pretty good damage if you hit confirm into the rest of the string. Next up, we got Kung Lao's down one. It is 7 frames on startup and it's really good for starting your own pressure or getting out of somebody else's pressure. Next up, we got Stand 2. This button is 8 frames on startup. It's one of his quickest punishers and most damaging punishers leading to the rest of the string, but the rest of the string isn't all that good for pressure, but just this first hit alone makes for a pretty good stagger. Next up, we got Stand 1. This is another amazing button to throw out for stagger pressure. I personally think Stand 2 is better because it recovers a little faster, but Stand 1 is also a pretty decent stagger, and it's one of his fastest punishers at 8 frames, just like Standing 2, and it leads to really good damage. Next, we got Forward 2. This button isn't really all that good for pressure, but the reason why I think it's a good button is because of how far it goes. Say somebody does a punishable a special move or just whiff something from a distance like about right here this is probably his furthest reaching button that'll try to you'll want to use if you're trying to catch somebody from a far distance and get a punish next we got down to uh this button isn't good for literally anything aside from probably just anti-airing so yeah i think down two is his best button if you're trying to anti air somebody and i also think his stand one and stand two are decent but his down two i think is a little more reliable Next, we got Kung Lao's down three. This thing is seven frames on startup, and I by far think it's one of his best pokes because it's a low for one. It goes really far for two, and it recovers really fast, so you could really just throw it out and try to catch somebody with it and then possibly just grab them after you hit them with a down three. Next, we got forward four. This button is also one of his best mids aside from forward one. The only thing, the only downside about it is if the opponent blocks it, you pretty much lose your turn. That's why I like forward one as a mid better because you can at least uh, mix it up between doing the whole string or staggering it. But forward four is pretty good though because it is safe. So at the end of the day, you're not risking anything doing it. Next, we got down four. It's one of his best pokes just simply because of how far it goes. It goes further than down three. As you can see from right here, down three will not hit. Down one won't hit, but down four will. That's why this poke is not all that bad. All right, next up, guys, I'm going to go over Kung Lao's best variation, in my opinion. And I'm no slash Kung Lao. I'm definitely one of the best Kung Lao's, in my opinion, besides Scar or Splash. And the reason why I think Z Hat and Spiritual Guidance are the best variations to put together is because, honestly, those two moves really help alleviate some of the bad matchups he used to have before. Just simply because Z Hat is a really good tool. It's a super good tool, and Spiritual Guidance leads to meterless damage every single time somebody gets hit. Unlike Lotus Fist, which is probably the most popular variation, Lotus Fist, you're ending up spending a lot of meter and a lot of resources every time you want to try to open somebody up. And I don't really like that, so that's why I like Spiritual Guidance for the meterless combo potential. So basically, the game plan you want to go into and the mindset you want to go into playing Lao with is you want to throw the opponent a lot. You want to make them so scared of getting hit by full combos that you want them to just sit there and block because nobody wants to get hit by Kung Lao because he does a lot of damage. And in this variation, he does a lot of damage meterlessly, which really sucks because a lot of characters in this game have to come off meter to do their combos and Kung Lao really doesn't in this variation. That's why I like it. So once you get people really scared to get hit, you know, you just really want to throw a lot. And I like Z Hat because when you EX it, you can see at the bottom left of the screen, that's plus 23 on block. Up close, plus 20 on block, full screen, plus 26. So think about it. Anytime you threw an EX Z Hat, I usually go for a grab because if you're plus 20 if you're 20 plus on block nobody wants to press a button because they know they're going to lose so what you want to do after exe hat is grab or you want to do exe hat and then do four to one three and either try to see if you could hit confirm it into a combo another good thing about z hat is if it hits you get a combo and when i mean a combos i mean it, it, you get a good combo off of it think about that on block you're going to be plus 20 something every time you do z hat and if it hits, you get a, a full combo. Well, that's one bar, 20 plus percent, good knockdown, and you're in their face. So I love Z-Hat just for the simple fact that you're always going to be plus 20 something if they block it, and you're going to get an entire full combo if they get hit by it. 
And spiritual guidance is sick because you literally get meterless combos. Unlike any other variation that Kung Lao has, you get meterless conversions with spiritual guidance if you do the up burst. And another game plan to Kung Lao that I forgot to mention that's probably the biggest part of his game plan is his jump three. His jump three has to be by far the dumbest jump kick in this entire game because for one, it's super hard anti air, and for two, he gets an amazing combo off of it. Every time you hit somebody with a jump kick, you get an entire full combo. Like, I could be all the way over here and jump kick somebody and just dash forward, do forward one, and get a spin, get a full combo, get a knockdown, set up Z hat, get a full conversion, get another combo, set up Z hat, cancel it, grab him. You know what I'm saying? There's just so much potential with this variation. And jump kick is just so stupid, and everybody who's good or at least plays the game knows how annoying Kung Lao's jump kick is. So don't be afraid to just literally turn off your brain and just jump kick people to death with Kung Lao. What I can say that's bad about the character in reality is the simple fact that his zoning is really lackluster. Nobody's really scared to get hit by that because it's a high. They could just neutral duck it and it won't hit them at all. And Z has good, right? But, you know, if the opponent... If you do it from full screen and the opponent sees it coming, they could just jump right over it, no problem, because as you can see, it hits low. So this is a high that could duck it. Z hat's a low, so his zoning potential is kind of dookie. So in that aspect, he kind of gets his own out by a lot of characters that have amazing zoning. Yes, he has this. That's another projectile he gets with spiritual guidance, but it's a low that is, you could just easily block or jump. And you're real, nobody's really scared to get zoned out by Kung Lao. His, his zoning is really lackluster. And... In, in return, like I said, he just gets zoned out by anybody who has really good zoning. All right, next I'm going to go over some of Kung Lao's best strings and why I believe these are some of his best strings. First up, we got 1-2-1. One, one. This string is amazing because on the hit, all three hits come out, which means it's super easy to hit confirm into spin. And on block, only the first two hits come out. So with that being said, since the third hit only comes out on hit, that means you will easily be able to recognize it and just hit confirm it in a spin every time. Next, we got forward one, two. You don't really get crazy combo potential off this string, but the good thing about this string is it's good to end your combos with because it leads to a good knockdown and it's just safe. Next, we got forward one, three. Forward one, three is similar to forward one, two in the sense that they both start with forward one, but the difference is forward one, three is actually hit confirmable into spin so you can get a full combo off of it. The only downside of forward 1-3 is if the opponent blocks it, you're forced to make a decision between doing hat toss to kind of stay safe, but not really safe if the opponent reads it, or just letting the string go and doing nothing and still being punishable, but making the opponent guess between you either, either throwing the hat or doing nothing. So the opponent, you're, you're punishable either way. That's the only downside of forward 1-3 is that it's punishable on block. All right, next we got 2-1-2-1-2. This string isn't really good for doing on block for pressure necessarily, but it jails on a few characters in the cast for the most part, though, on the rest of the cast. This string will literally just whiff if the opponent crouches. But the reason why I think this string is really good is because it is by far one of his most damaging starters. Look at how much damage this does alone before I even go into a launcher. It's about 16%. So, yeah, that's one of his most damaging starters. All right, next up we got 4-2-1. Like I said... It's the same thing as 4-2, except it's the rest of the string. This, the rest of the string is good because, say somebody does something punishable from all the way over here, forward one won't reach, but, you know, 4-2 will definitely reach. So that's why I think 4-2-1 is good because you could hit confirm it into a launcher, whether it be spin or something else to get a combo and punish somebody from a distance. All right, next we got 4-2-1-4. The really only good benefit to the string is that it has a crushy blow on it. And like I said... If somebody does something punishable from a distance from, like, say, all the way over here, you have a Punisher for it, and a really good one at that, and you get a really good combo. So, yeah, 4214, it has a crushing blow on it. That's why it's good. All right, guys. Next up, I'm going to go over some of the BMBs that you guys can do with this variation setup with Kung Lao mid screen and in the corner for a bar, two bars, no bars, all that. So, let's get right into it.
that's going to wrap it up for the Kung Lao guide, guys. I hope you guys got something out of it and realized the strength and potential in this variation that I showed you guys. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and check out the other three guys I did, which were Johnny Cage, Liu Kang, and Kano. You can also check out all the things shown in this video in the text version via the link in the description. If you like this video, please leave a like or comment below with your thoughts. Thank you for watching. Peace.